is meant for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm-hmm. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. It's the best of Love Line. Can't tell you this, Dr. Drew, even though he's probably on vacation right now, having his uh, nuts kicked around like a soccer ball by his domineering wife, he's still a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. So, now, without any further ado, let's hear the best of Loveline. Family Guy did something tonight that was yeah. one of your bits. I don't yeah. know what it was now. All right. Elliot? Hey. You're 18? Yes, I am. What's up? Well, I um, just want to say I've been a fan of the show for a while. I've been listening to the tune of five years. Wow. Oh. Work to the tune of, then. Yes, I nice. did. Nice. All right. So my question is, I would like hold to... Hold on. Know. Hold on. I just thought of one of the... Uh, you know, I got that big, long list of things uh, that I want to do before I die. Yeah. Having, uh, having my hands registered as, uh, as weapons, diving into a body of water with a knife in my mouth, that kind of stuff. Having a cape removed from me. Yes, yes. You know, you know the one more thing I decided today? Huh. I want somebody in my group, after I greet uh, a group of reporters and say, uh, uh, hello, yes, yes, I'm good, I'm good. And then they all start shouting questions. Tell me no more questions. Yes, somebody, <laughs> somebody yells, thank you, no. thank you. No more questions. No more questions. As I walk away. I don't say no more questions. Yeah. Someone in my entourage yells no more questions as I walk away. I'll work on that, too. Maybe the same guy removes my cape. <laughs> Elliot? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, bud. Oh, it's all good. Um, I want to know if there have been any recent developments with the male birth control, and if you guys think, if there was, if people would really take it. What, what made you ask this question? Well, I'm doing a, um, a speech on this in my communications class. I'm going to Cal State Long Beach. I, I strangely did a piece on this for CNN tonight. Uh, nice. Where, yeah, there was this new study out of Australia where they proved the contraceptive efficacy over a couple of years of a combination shot of progesterone and little e- testosterone pellets like like a uh, boring plant. bit that they put under the skin of the men and so they, they get enough testosterone and they shut them down with the progesterone mm-hmm. and uh, this Wait a minute. At, I, they use the, the, progest- the progesterone shuts the, pituitary. the progesterone is the female it's a, it's a female hormone that has but testosterone. it's not it's not estrogen it's progesterone different. okay but let, let me let, let's get something straight yeah uh, testosterone male hormone yep Estrogen, female hormone. Progesterone, female hormone. Progesterone, female. Does male have a second uh, hormone? <coughs> we have p- adrenal hormones that have androgenic activity. But they have two big ones. <coughs> DHEA. They have the estrogen two and big ones. progesterone. And we have one big one. We have yes. one big one. Yes. I got one medium one. Medium to small one. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So the they progest- give you the progesterone to right. shut down the sperm. Right. And then, but but then that also they- shuts the testosterone down. Right. So they give you testosterone back. But doesn't... The testosterone re-stimulate the sperm production. Yes. No, it probably even suppresses it more. Really? Yeah. The the thing and this particular the, the idea is ultimately there'll be a shot that a guy takes every three or four months, and in this particular uh, pill, it actually increased their sex drive. Wow. Yeah. So we're thinking. So my well, it increased it because they they were overshooting probably in the amount they were giving them. No, I mean because they were on the birth control. It was like a like. A car or a movie or something that was going to get returned. Like, like they did the work. They wanted to use it. Like when I rent porn, I beat off twice as much because it's, it costs money. Probably, probably actually is just too much testosterone around. So if I beat off once, the one time cost me six bucks. But I, I beat off like 70 times, it's like three cents a piece. That's nice. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh yeah. Know. Yeah. But Elliot, yeah. I bring that up because that seemed to motivate the guys to use it. Uh, although, I got to admit, I, I, the thing I brought up is I've been working with Trojan for a while to try to get them to find ways to get guys to use condoms and practice safe sex. And it's almost impossible, A, to get guys to cooperate with that. B, get a guy into a doctor every three months. I mean, what world is that going to happen? And that's the other part. And then C, guys are just going to be taking, uh, you know, band-aids and cutting them into weird shapes and sticking them on their yeah, arms like, I'm, and I'm eating a Pez in yeah. front of a chick going, oh, yeah, baby, you're safe with me. That, that, that concerns me, too. However, you know, we could raise a new generation uh, to be used to this kind of thing and to be more responsible. We've certainly put the burden squarely on women. Yeah. Is, and the, to the extent where it's kind of shocking because I was reading the side effects and going, no, 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 guys never do this. And I thought... Think about the women put up with these pills. I know. They gain weight, they're moody, they're, they're periods all over the place. Well, here's the ironic thing. The only guys you're going to get to take those pills are the gays who don't need them. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I think Gay I guy do. would be very sympathetic and do that. Yeah. Straight guy don't want to do that. Responsible. It's Sympathetically it's, responsible. It's like with recycling. Right. Gays recycle. Yeah. Let's face it. 
Good times. Mm-hmm. You ready to keep rolling here? Yeah, uh-huh. One day I'll tell you the group that doesn't recycle the most. Who? I can't say it. It's too racist. <laughs> Starts with an M. I'm on line. Starts yeah. with an N. You are. Can't do it. I can't do it. I work with them all day. I beg them to do it. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say. If I beg them, they can't do it. Tyler? Yep. You're 18? Yep. What's up? Um, well, I'm getting the girl who... I'm best friends with her brother. All right. I'm annoyed. The connection's bad. Tyler's bad. The phone's cutting out. Tyler, hang on until I get more patience. Bill? Yeah. You're 17? Mm-hmm. What's up? Well, I'm kind of... Oh boy. All right. Yeah, yeah. This is my new policy. Yeah. Jason? Yeah, how's it going? Good. You're 21. What's your question? Uh, my question is for Dr. Drew. I just want to say long-time listener, first-time caller. Um, I'm kind of going bald on top of my head here, and I want to know the actual long-term effects of Rogaine, if there's any side effects that that might have on my actual hair if I stop using it. If you stop using it, the hair will f probably fall out again. Okay, so that means if I start using it, I have to use it for keep, the rest of my life? You have to keep using it. Yeah, Propecia is well, the other thing you can do. Well, pill. wait a minute. But stopping using the Rogaine doesn't make your hair fall out. It just goes back to goes where back. you were. Yeah, it's not as though it, f it instantly falls out the day you stop using the Rogaine. No, but I mean, it's not like the Rogaine even had anything to do with it. Right. Right. Okay, now, so you think Propecia is a better alternative now, or is there mm -hmm. any, like, herbal remedies that I could use? Mm -hmm. Sort of they a, say they say to use the Rogaine and the Propecia yeah, in together. concert with each other. If you really want to get some effect, believe me. Look, if there were easy, natural ways to do it, people would know about it, right? It would not right, be a secret. Right. It would not be a secret. Yeah, Propecia and Rogaine evidently is the uh, thing to do, and they're probably they're making pretty good strides in the uh, transplant program. Yep. I think. Yep, they are. And it's one of those things where everyone pictures hair plugs as hair plugs. Mm -mm. Right, it is right, also, yeah. It's also one of those things where you don't know if a guy had a good job or not. And I would right. bet you that many celebrities who you don't know, I mean, like I said, if you've got a couple of, couple of bucks to spend on it and you can afford to take a month off and go to Arizona and uh, convalesce okay. over there and nobody knows, uh, you're good. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, yeah, I mean... It's not really relevant to see it right now, but I can tell that it's starting to become a problem, and I wanted to just know if there was going to be pre any preventative measures I could actually do. Put the, the, now's the time to use the Rogaine and use it regularly, and that's exactly the kind of balling that it does a good job on. So, I wonder, right, is well, there, what do you think is around the corner from a technological standpoint, Drew? Uh, another, just a stronger version of the same thing, basically, with no side effects. Mm -hmm. Then I was thinking about a couple things we seem to be ahead of, a couple things we seem to be behind on. Like, um, like getting rid of rats and roaches and bugs and stuff. Behind? Yeah, seem, seems like, and, and hair stuff for men. You know, guys, I mean, I know, I know it sounds cliche, but we have been on the moon for 30-something years now. The whole hair thing, just starting to, starting to get a handle on it. Starting to get a handle on it. And there's stuff... That just seems like taller orders that we've we're done with, you know. You know, it seems. Think about this though. Think how big a deal the, the hair loss thing was in the seventies when the hair was everything. Right. Yeah, everyone shaves their head. Well, Who everyone cares? shaves their head because no one's really found a good. No one's figured a good thing out though. But if you're losing your hair today, it's just, yeah. So what? Well, I know, but uh, like I said, I think a lot of it was just based on people not being able to do anything about it. Yeah. I'm just saying. Here's the other thing I want. You know the sonic things that are supposed to get rid of rats and roaches and bugs? You want them to work? I want them to work. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I mean, you see the, the drawing on the box, like when you're, in the, when you're on the plane and you're looking at the Sky Mall pamphlet oh, yeah. and you're looking in there and the gopher's like holding his ears <laughs> and running for your neighbor's yard, like sprinting. Crazy. Anderson, make the uh, cartoon running sound because that's, uh, that's that crazy can with the corn in it. Th that's the sound... It's making it's what in the rat with corn in it. I don't know what it is. No, there's a, there's another one that has a cra it's a crazier sound wow. than that. It sounds like a, a drum with a acorn in it. Oh, wow, you got that, Anderson? Sorry, He's looking. Oh. No, no, the paddles. Okay, the paddles. The point is, we can't work that out. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that'd be awesome. You plug a few of those in the house. Spiders, roaches, ants. Every, everything's just running the other way. I like what they just turn upside down. Yeah. That's, that's the picture I like. And those big X's yeah, for eyes. 
<laughs> I didn't know how the X-Ry thing worked, but uh, all right, let's uh, keep keep on keeping on here, Drew. John? John, yeah. Hello. What's we got a guy from Boston in the background? He yeah, care. we do, unfortunately. He doesn't care. That's cool though, Red Sox, right? Who's the guy in the oh. background? My sweet mate, Oh, well, that's good. Hey, remember, yeah. uh, no, we didn't talk to the screeners, but ironically, we're sort of looking out for it. We were talking to producer Ann before we went on the air tonight. And I was saying, I don't care what kind of questions we get. I'm just tired of jack-offs calling this show. They're, listen, screeners, listen to me for a second. If there's 19 guys in the background and you got some jack-off screaming and it's noisy or the line is bad or the guy... Or there's a good five second count in between him answering your, the question you asked and the next the next word that comes out of his mouth. Don't take the call. I don't care what the question is. I don't care if he's pregnant and on fire and about to give birth to an ass baby. I don't want to talk to him. Ass baby. I don't want to talk to anyone where there's a whole bunch of crap going on in the background where the guy's drunk, where the guy's cussing, where the guy can't form a sentence. I don't want any more of these. Uh, Drew, I'll be the caller. Yeah. Go ahead. You start. You should go. Uh, start. Adam, he's. Uh, I can't tell how old he is. He's from North Carolina. Hello. What's, what's up, Adam? What's your question? L- Love line. Yeah. Hey, what's your question? I got a question for Drew. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Go ahead. What's the question? Drew. Hmm. I'm. I'm 17. This is where I put you on hold. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Don't want that guy. Screeners. They got it. They got to be fast. They got to put it together. We got to move here. I got a new policy. Move your ass. Shake your ass. Shake your ass, that's right. Okay. Shake your ass. Tori? Oh, hey. Um, what's up, you guys? I'm a first-time caller. Thanks. I just want to know, like, why I'm a sex fiend. <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm talking about. No, like, I, I've had... 14. Having, 14. Yeah. I'm yeah, really little. horny. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had sex about 150 times. 14. 150 times. Well, How old? 147. Oh, I beg your pardon. How many different guys? Um, Three. Three. How old were you when it all started? Eleven. You, cool. How old was that guy? Um, he was only thirteen. Really? Wow. And um, were you ever molested, raped, abused? Um, no, actually, I wasn't. Mm. I had a pretty good life. Pretty good. Where's your dad? Um, actually, I'm living with him right now. Where's right. your mom? Um, in California. <laughs> Why is she not in your life? I don't. I, they got a divorce, divorce, and they like separated and stuff. How old were you when that happened? Um, about four. And why didn't you live with her? Um, well, she just, like, kind of, like, gave us that, like, she thought that she wasn't going to be responsible enough. Yeah. Does that make for a good life? I, a I, mother that abandons her kids? Well, I have a step, I have a stepmom. How's she? Right now. Um, well, she, like, there's, she's still sort of my stepmom, just they haven't got a divorce yet. Yeah. So, so he's, he's leaving this woman, too. How was she? She's really good. She actually, she I consider her my actual mom because she's raised me most of my life. Which right. is great. However, the the yeah. bond you had with your first mother, the the That's separation, devastating. yeah, it has a huge impact on you. Uh-huh. Huge. Yeah. Now, normally, young girls who are sort of acting out have issues with dad, but it's probably worse what went on with your mom. Yeah. Truth be told. Mm-hmm. So, uh, do you want to slow it down a little bit, Tori? <laughs> The problem, I just like I like having it. Like I don't you know like what to do, how to stop. Yeah, it. I, well, you could just uh, keep your legs together and not not do yeah, it about, so how much. How about seeing a therapist or seeing somebody that's uh, you know, it's obviously starting to bother you, and eventually it will bother you a lot. Yeah, you're you're looking for solutions. You're solving problems from your past by means that are ultimately not going to work for very long. Okay, and. All right. uh, you, do you any history of bipolar illness in the family, manic depression? Um, no. Well, my brother, yeah, he went through a depression time because, like, he was really connected to our mom. And he was, like, nine years old when they separated. Mm. And so he got, like, yeah. anxiety, like, I don't know. It was, yeah. What, what was up with her that she left? What was her problem? Um, they just always got advice and drugs. Yeah. Like, drugs. drugs. She was a drug addict. Yeah. So. This, I, I'm not able to take care of you means I'm just more into drugs than I am into your kids. Okay. That's what that is. All right, so that's that's a horrible thing to happen yeah. to a uh, four-year-old with do mommy. You, do you do drugs? Um, actually, I've only tried pot two times, but I never really got high. Mm, yeah. mm, 
All right. So be careful. You have a boyfriend right now? Yeah. <laughs> how come how come you're having sex with two other guys? No, well, no I that did was before. before. Yeah. Oh, how old uh, how old is your boyfriend now? Fourteen. Mm, that son of a bitch. He's my age. You guys using protection? Yeah. What are you using? Condoms and um my friend went to play parenthood um for me. She's fifteen though and like she got me like all this stuff. What? Like birth control and stuff. You you're taking she, somebody else's birth control? Well, because no. like, I can't go in without my parents knowing. Why? I don't know. I just heard it. That, I like, believe you can at four, if 14. Check it out. I don't think they're going to call. I believe at 14 anything. you can. Okay. But look, you're taking somebody else's medicine. What what pill are you taking? Um, oh, crap. I haven't taken it for a while. You haven't seen it for a while, so you're not taking it? Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, All right. Oh, yeah. Tori. Tori. Oh, yeah. Uh... A little therapy would be nice, but certainly just uh, slowing down on the sex would be uh, yeah. would be better. Yeah, it feels like uh, you're trying to uh, fill some sort of hole. Pardon the uh, the graphic pun that uh, has no bottom on it. That's and, what that is, and just feels good. But it does feel good when the dirt is being shoveled in. Mm -hmm. It's just you have to constantly shovel. Mm -hmm. Eventually, your back wears out because mm -hmm. you're on it. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. God knows what I would have done if I had that chance. If you had a vagina? Oh. oh, my God. Yeah. It would have been like, uh, I, I would see a picture of you in that reconstruction manual. <laughs> it would have, Not because you were switching over, just to repair, what, yeah, would repair what you did to it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I was uh, depressed and miserable and had a crappy childhood and a crappy family and all that stuff when I was uh, young, too, but... If chicks started knocking on my door, like, you know, if I was 11, 12, 13 years old and it was like a knock on the door and some hot 15-year-old chick who wanted to party, yeah. And then, you know, then uh, her friend wanted to party too. And as as I got older, 12, 13, 14, it's like, hey, more parties, more but, chicks, but more girl, attention. It will be, be even more satisfying because the guy would make it, he would say anything you wanted and make you feel wanted and loved. You think I'm beautiful? Yeah. You like my Brillo head? <laughs> really? Wine coolers, thank you. What do I owe you? You pay oh, such attention on to the me. house. No one's ever paid attention like this. To You're me. gonna buy me a forty ounce or beer? That's great. All right. Oh, you got a moped? Oh well, let's go. You'd be a celebrity. That's what that is. Ah. Oh. Now cervical celebrity. No, it wasn't. That wasn't the case at all. Meanwhile, my wife was listening to the show last night for some uh, inexplicable reason when uh, Kimmel was on here talking about me cramping in the shower. <laughs> it's great. <What? laughs> she hit me with that before I left today. What did, what did she say? Is it true? And Bobcat brought it up, too. Is it true you crapped in the shower and mashed it down with your heel? <laughs> And, and you know, I, I like my... I, here's how you can tell when I'm lying. When I give one of these answers. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even lying. That's you temporizing. That's, that's my heel. That's what that is. Yeah. Huh? Huh? Uh, uh, my heel. I thought you'd answer it. No, my toes. My toes. Yeah. My toes. I just... Uh, it, it's the kind of lie that they do, uh, you know, when they bust the guy at the transmission shop for, you know, once in a while, 2020, or Dateline sends some elderly couple... In, in a uh, in a motor home that's all rigged up with cameras into some podunk town to have their transmission fluid yes, replaced, and right. they, they get footage of the guy whacking it with a claw into the hammer, right. and then they then the John Stossel goes in there two days later and goes, "Is it true you fixed this car?" And that guy shows him the receipt, and yeah, yeah, it needed a new transmission, and, and he goes, "I'd like to show you something," and they open that little clamshell monitor and the, the guy watches video of him taking a hammer to the old guy's transmission and then he looks up and he looks down and he just goes I don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> that just always means there's really no response they never give in they right. should give in they never do it's just uh, I don't know about that <laughs> sort of like the dog from uh, did she mention the dude Davey, you left Davy and Goliath that's right I don't know Davey. I don't know Davy did she mention the Duke you left to welcome her home she did she brought that up One, to right, Next thing out yeah, of her mouth. Uh, That's why my delay of flesh is going to work <laughs> great for the for the guys who like to talk. For the man on the go, on the pot, likes to talk on the phone and duke at the same time. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hello. This is your radio. Hey, everybody, 
Beach Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified. Blah, 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 blah. I was watching uh, one of my favorite shows, is a show on HBO called uh, Autopsy. It's like mm-hmm. Autopsy 6, you know. Which makes me mad when they give them the, the number designations. Because I always seem to start at 6 or 14 or 27. And I'm always like, rather. I love this show. Where'd the other 15 go that right. I missed? And right. how? And where were they? I watch HBO every other day. I never saw one. And they run things to death. But anyway, this time, then they do these sort of uh, police forensic stories. and But it's re- it's by real uh, pathologist. And um, they, uh, wait a minute, not path- yeah, yeah. It's pathologist. Okay. So the point is, is um, they did an actual autopsy this time. Oh, you don't normally see them. They normally don't physically do the autopsy. They just interview the guys and show the crime scenes and stuff like that. And it's pretty graphic. But this time, they're cutting into the chest plate. And they got that, uh, you know, elect- electric pizza cutter yeah. out and stuff. And uh, I just, uh, I had to turn my head. And really? Oh, You're yeah. a pussy. I oh, didn't know that. Huge puss. Oh, oh they got into the brain and stuff. Yeah, he's unsaw. Yeah, no, no, not for me. You know why? You know what this is? I work around too many power tools. <laughs> And it bothers me to see tool. When I see tools going into flesh, I just it just I think of an accident on the job site. I see. But as long as the guy's dead, wouldn't it be fun to see what a sixteen penny nail yeah, so would I'll tell do? You what, what is weird is when you're you're struggling with a patient. You know, you're struggling, struggling, and then they're dead, and then you go do the autopsy. Yeah, you've been hanging out with them for a month, and that, now you get the weird. pizza cutter out. That, that's a little weird. You know, cut right into that chest plate. Uh, can't so we weird. just run people through scanners or something? And here's the other thing too. We do a lot of exhuming of bodies, you know. They dig up bodies all the time. It's like uh, her first husband, you know, once they found out she'd given the cyanide to her last husband, well, then they had to look into her other husband who died in 1974. The body was in relatively good shape. You know? They always do that. They're always digging people up. Like, look, why don't we just uh, put them in a Ziploc and put them somewhere with a tag on them or something? We keep digging them up. Why don't we, like, keep samples like the Egyptians did, little jars? Leave the body behind. Yeah. I mean, that's just going to be a huge pain in the ass, not only for, uh, you know, the grieving family, but just what about the poor schmuck who's getting eight bucks an hour? Go, Bob, yeah. Yeah, get the backhoe. What do you mean? We, he's been in the ground for 22 years. He's been manicuring. His yeah, we're bringing him up. We're going to need you to pop the lid on it. They always do that. They always pull him up, and there's they're just fine. I mean, they're dead, but other than that, they're fine. They're like, yeah, the body was amazingly well preserved, and we could we got tissue counts. It was high levels of, uh, and they just do that every time. Oh yeah. Here's the other thing I I, I watch on those shows too. They cut the, they got these. Uh, they had this one guy was the uh, angel of death. He was the uh, like the mercy killer, the hospital guy. Oh, yeah. Everyone who was in there got hooked up to life support. They killed him, you know. Yeah. And uh, they popped him for killing two or three people, but uh, he could have gone as high as fifty. And, you know, he could have been one of the most prolific American serial killers. But I still bet the other serial killers who basically just, you know, kill 15-year-old prostitutes kind of scoff at him. Right. Yeah, yeah. What would you do? Uh, tweak his breathing tube? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that took a lot of work. Sure. I got a van where I had to, had to tint the windows and pick up prostitutes on the street. Cops all over the place. What would you do? Just pull someone's trach tube out? Give me a break. Mm-hmm. That's nothing. But I mean, it must not garner a whole lot of a whole lot of respect in the serial killer community. But here's the thing: when they have the conventions, yeah, and the ser- <laughs> welcome serial killers. What do you do? What'd you do? Uh, the guy was 94, and I pulled a catheter out of his dork, and I bled to death. Uh, yeah, nice. My, my granddaughter could have done that. All right, so here's what. Uh, this guy's killing everybody, and they always do this. The serial killers always do this. They go like, uh, look, uh, I don't want the death penalty. It's, it's weird that they're so enamored with death. It's like their whole life is death, but yeah. then when it comes to them, they're pussies, you know? Yeah. They're like, uh, I don't want to die. Yeah. Really? Seems like almost something you'd be looking forward well, to. You know, the, uh, you got to send something. When people do that kind of thing, other people do not exist. They do not exist to them. Well, because they're dead. Yeah, no, I know no, what you're no. saying. Yeah, they can't. So they're so these guys always do a thing where they go, "Look, um, I know there's uh, you know you got me for killing nine people, uh, but I don't want to die. Um, there's another twenty or thirty people I killed uh, that I'll tell you about. Uh, you know, if you agree not to kill me. Wow. And they're always like, uh, okay. And then they tell Ooh. them about the other forty people they snuffed, and they're like. 
All right. Uh, what do you like? Uh, what, what do you you want to get the uh, yellow salad? You get the, the chicken, or are you allergic to anything? Yeah. Uh, balsamic vinegar or anything? Because uh, yeah, yeah. What, you get some cable. What do you like? Like Showtime or Cinemax? That's it. Oh, <laughs> now that he's confessed to killing the other forty people. Well, we can't go back on our words. I mean, police word could get out in the serial killing community that we were two faced, fork tongued. I say we just kill them anyway. Can we just do that? This other great one. This is an amazing case. This woman, she's young. She's like 20. Marries this maniac in Canada. But the guy sort of looks like uh, he looks like the seventh member of Duran Duran. It's just like his white guy. He's like 23. He's got that sort of flock of seagulls kind of look to yeah. him. And uh, this guy's a homicidal maniac. He's, uh. He kills her sister, oh rapes her sister, her younger sister, sodomizes her right Ooh. in front of her, makes her go down. On her sister oh for birthday God. present. It's like it, insanity. She marries him two months later. It's a 15 year old sister's dead. Oh. Starts killing a bunch of 15 year olds. Then, so at a certain point, the woman comes to the um, comes to the police, and uh, after he gets caught, and says, uh, "Look, um, I'll tell you everything that this guy did. I just want you know, you got to cut me a deal." And they're like, oh, "Okay, well, we'll cut you a break. Just tell us everything he did." And she tells them all these gruesome, horrible stories. They would kidnap 15-year-old women and sort of keep them barely alive while he did horrible, unthinkable acts to them. Yeah, for you know, She was right there the whole uh. time. But she played that uh, I was scared uh. sort of thing. But I, I, by the way, I'm done with that. You know, the whole part where you're scared for your own life and he's uh, raping the 15-year-old in the bathroom. I, go, go ahead and step out the front door and start screaming bloody murder, would you? Yes, ya? yes. I, I, I will, I'd like to hold you somewhat culpable for yes. this as well. But then they find a bunch of videotapes of this horrible things he's doing, and she's there laughing the whole time. Uh -huh. But they're like, yeah, we already cut the deal with her, so she's cool. Really? What about the videotapes we now found? I mean, we cut the deal before we found all the videotapes where you stood around handing the guy towels while he raped and killed people. Didn't it? We're not going to factor that in? Or can we just go back on our word just a little bit? What's your word mean to a serial killer? Really? Is there some problem here? Oh, but you'll be as bad as a serial killer. You'll be just <laughs> really? as bad as they will if really? you lie to them. Really? You would be, Adam. <laughs> is word going to get out in the serial what, killing what community? What is the logic of that? I, I don't know. Yeah. I, would, I would instruct all my people to cut everyone deals. Like, uh, listen, we're setting you up on a... We're, you're going to island in the Bahamas, and I'm going to get you hookers, and what do you like? You like pineapple? pineapple they're going to take those rings of, of pineapple put them around your penis and give you oral sex will really eat off them beautiful underage polynesian women. just tell us one murder just one just one okay kill him kill him that's what i do and their thing would be like see the police are like yeah but if word gets out that this word would never get out he'd be dead no one would know about my polynesian vacation promise ah oh. Oh, we do this all the time. There's just all this. You don't know all the deals these guys cut with everybody. They get two guys. One guy kills half the people. The other guy kills the other. And they cut a deal with the guy. Yeah, we'll be easy on you. Just help us with your buddy. Huh. That's nice. That's, well, nice. that's a nice topic that's, for tonight. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, that's good time, huh? Jennifer? Yes. You're 18? Yes. Oh, yeah. So you invited <laughs> your 22-year-old uh, co-worker over uh, one night. And? And he won't leave. He just kind of stayed. He stayed in your house? Yeah. Is he still there? Yeah. Adam will get him to leave for you. How long has it been? About three weeks. Oh, my God. He's not left your house in three no. weeks? Yeah, and I told him that he cannot stay there and that he has to leave and he just won't leave. Put him on the phone with us. I left. <laughs> oh, you left. Oh, you're out. Oh, yeah. I'm going to stay at my parents' house. Does he like you? I have no idea. You don't know whether he is interested I think in you? He does, but I don't know. What I was don't the want sort of, him there. <laughs> what was sort of the, the presumption of what he was coming over for that first night? Was it for dinner or something or just hang out or we went out and got drunk and then, you know, came back and I told him that he could stay the night and I went to class the next morning and came back and he was still there and been there ever since. Do you see him at work? Yeah. Hold on, Drew. Shut you that stupid call. You have book. a call coming up about this. I don't want to look at that book. Drew got the uh, crazy anatomy book where they lop off everyone's penis and there's ugh, weird vaginal but like tongs in them and stuff. Come on, Drew. All right. 
Do you, oh, wait. Did she see him at work or not? Yeah. You do? What kind of work yeah. do you do? I work in a restaurant. Yeah. Uh, this is typical you, restaurant behavior. And what's he say to you? What's his story? If we talk to him, and don't tell us, I don't know. If I got him on the phone right now and said, look, what are you doing? That's not your house. She wants you out of your house. What would, what would he say? That he lives there? That, that he, he's that telling he, that, people that he lives with me. That, are you guys boyfriend, girlfriend as far as he's concerned? No. Have you ever had sex with him? No. You have, have you kissed him? No. What? Did he agree to pay rent? No. Is he psychotic? I think. Why don't you call the cops? Is that what I should do? Yes. Absolutely. I hate calling the cops, but call the cops. Absolutely. We know all the Culver City guys. They'll they'll tell us about it. Yeah, call the cops. Just tell them to get this guy out of there. You asked him to leave. He's squatting. It's your house. You pay the rent. Your name's on the lease. He's gone. Is your name on the lease? Yeah. Is it, a, is it an apartment? Yeah. And you're just renting it yourself? Yeah. No roommates or anything like that? I have a dog. Don't you have any male friends or anything that can go Who's, get, get yeah. out of there? What about just some of your buddies going there and kick his ass? No, I just moved up there to go to college, and I really don't know anyone. <laughs> uh, no one at work? I work with. Well, what about them? What's their feeling on this guy? What about your manager at work? I have no idea. Well, you got to tell have them. No idea. You see your you see your manager, I right? I wonder if Jennifer's a psychotic one. Wait, has she asked him I'm to leave? I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> she says she has been explicitly telling him to leave. Wait, what's he do? He's a bartender or a b- He's bus a boy? He's a what? A server. A server. Server. Okay, you guys have a manager, right? Yeah. And he's he's able to go to work at the during the day. Yeah. Call a locksmith, and when he goes when he goes out to work, change the locks. He Jennifer. Have a key. So how does he get how does he get in and out? He's just there. He just won't leave. I don't know. You said he goes to work. Yeah. When he goes to work, lock the door. Okay. Why is that so hard for you? Because I'd have to see him at work. Then you tell your manager that you're being sexually harassed. Okay. Okay. When does he you you you, you know everyone's shift, right? Yeah. All right. Next time he has a shift, you go to work or you go home and you lock him out and you tell your manager that's where you are. You tell him ahead of time. You tell your manager exactly what you're going to do. You know, it takes Something's two. Up here. It takes two to tango. You know what I mean? Well, this guy knew he could take advantage of Jennifer. Jennifer cannot come to her own defense at all. God it's knows amazing. what he's doing to the dog sexually. Oh uh, yeah. You know what I mean, Drew? The dog. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear her mention a dog. She has a dog. <gasps> Jennifer? Yeah. Do you have a dog? Yes. Is it is it at home with that sexual predator? No, it's with me. Okay. Good. I'm what in kind my of dog is this? Can, can he, <laughs> what, can't that dog attack him? It's a chihuahua. Ugh, yes, it can. Uh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's all they do. Are, or do they, are they just bitchy to their owners? Uh, no, to everybody. Ooh. Except predators, interestingly. Yeah, you know what would be a nice pay-per-view for me? Just... Chihuahua chucking? Yeah, Chihuahua but I, chuck? I was thinking kicking. Kicking. Yeah. I was thinking taking... How about just punt, pass, and throw? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, I was thinking it's punt, pass, and kick. Kick, I beg your pardon. I would like to see some international soccer stars and some, like, uh, mm, some old, old-style old NFL kickers, the ones that... Uh, not not the sidewinders, the straight-ahead kickers. With the, with the big toe. With the big, big steel toe yeah, in there. Okay. And just pow. Just uh, Tom, when did that go Tom, away? Tom Dempsey style. Pow. Just chihuahuas just being teed up, and we see who can make it. Uh, even the worst, the best chihuahua in the world still. I would laugh, laugh like a hyena, which is my next competition. They're going to be harder to kick. Hyenas, yeah. Chihuahuas, don't eat them. Let's just kill them all. One bullet. Get rid of all of them. They're that small. Drew. Yeah. What do you want to know? Forgot. Right. When did they get rid of the steel toe stuff? The NFL. Yeah, the, the soccer kick but style kickers like that would, coming in about the early 80s. But didn't it seem, doesn't it seem like the bringing back the steel toe would be a way to extend things a bit? I think they made the uh, kicking made shoe rule. illegal. Yeah. 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 All right. We'll take ourselves a little break. We'll talk uh, more uh, more about NFL and uh, the more about uh, penal codes and uh, what we should do with uh, serial killers all after this. Uh.
Hi. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Karen? Yeah? You're 17? Yes. What's up? Um, okay, I have a question. My, I guess I'm, like, not normal down there. Mm-hmm. What's the problem? Well, I didn't, like, think anything, but, like, a boyfriend that I was with for, like, two years had said something like, he said I was a normal. Well, I went to the doctor, and she said, like, I had, like, enlarged inner lips or something. Mm-hmm. Well, Adam, here's a picture of that. Ooh. It just so happens. And oh, there's really? a surgery. That they look, oh. look how nice it looks afterwards. Uh, look, what's look, look, the look. first picture? What's the trouble picture? There's a, there and here. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. It's like a, it was like a huge wad of chewing gum and, and pigeon crap and just balled it all together and mashed it onto someone's crotch. But here, look. This is after the operation. This is after the operation. Uh, uh, that's, that's good, huh? Yeah, it's tough with the glare, but... Yeah. 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 Anyway, there are, there are aesthetic labia all procedures right. that... Let's close that, that book, uh, please. That people will do that uh-huh. seem fairly successful, mm-hmm. and if that's something you want to do, that's something you can consider later on. But how about probably. just growing? Well, you know, let me tell you something, ladies. Uh, guys do a lot of work with uh, beards. What I mean is, is you see that fat guy who grows a beard and then carves it in and essentially carves himself a jawline. A chin, yeah. You see the guy with the real weak chin. He grows a goatee. Looks kind of good. Mm-hmm. How about you just uh, train that hedge over that stump? Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, about as, as explicitly as can be said. <laughs> well, I just mean you got old stump out in the yard. It's not good looking. Train Raccoon's the, been chewing on it. Train whatnot. the ivy over it? Train that ivy right over it. There you go. How about that, Karen? All right. Well, I'm just like, I don't know if like, another guy would like freak out or... No. Yeah. Be fine. Listen. Well. The, no. Well, they're not huge fans of it, but the, the they're, listen, love they're, is, is love. They're just happy if you're there. They do have surgery, so as Drew pointed out. No, but I think they're real expensive. Probably. Well, Probably. by the way, is there's no cheap surgery, right? No. What's the cheapest, Drew? I mean, like a wart removal or something. Yeah. Have, yeah. All right. Karen? Yeah? How about getting a wart removed from down there? <laughs> okay. Evidently, that's pretty inexpensive. All right, so here's the thing. If, if, a, if a guy, this is how you know if a guy's in love. Yeah. And guys aren't that, they don't care what's going on down there. No. You're fine. But again, you could use a little of the hair, right? Yeah. Could you? Karen, relax. You're fine. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. You guys, uh, guys don't mind a little hair down there. No, they're fine. They're fine. I don't trust the guys that don't want any hair down there. No, it's a little weird. It is, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Vindicated. I'm sure. Yeah. Look at these magazines where all the ladies have extra hair. <laughs> What yeah. do they call that? Extra hair. <laughs> 1976 Playboy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Melissa? Yes? You're 20? Yeah. Oh, dude, um, do we got to take a break? Okay. In six yeah. minutes. Oh, really? Oh, we're on this side of that thing? What okay. are you talking about? I forgot which break we're in. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were running late. No, no, no. We had the 40-minute break. Hey, hey. Whoa, What's whoa, up there, Melissa? You've never done that before. That's pretty good. I know. Wow. You know, maybe and you were hung over last week. No, no. It still affects you. One week. One week of cocktails. No, 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 no. I had a, yes. I had a couple of cocktails tonight. Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm back. All right, Melissa, what's up? All right. Um, well, I met my boyfriend when I was 14, and we had sex when I was 15. And I really don't think I've ever had an orgasm, and I'm 20. You still with the same guy? Yeah. Have you been faking? Um, Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> but girl. the problem with faking is it doesn't urge the guy on to f- performing, you know, to try to find his way to the Yeah, it'd be like if a teacher was faking the test scores and just putting an A at the top of every time a guy handed in a D. Yeah, you just hand paper. in papers. You start, well, hey, you just start scribbling some stuff, stick figures on it, and they just put a big fat A and hand it back. Doesn't make you work, yeah. Well, the thing is, I didn't fake it for two years and then he started wondering if it was totally him and I don't really think it's him. Did you I mean, you start faking like, it that night? Huh? Did you start faking it that night? Yeah. The night? Oh, that's nice. How What is well, with guys? You know, now, now I believe... Uh, yeah. Come on, you believe that? Well, it's called serendipity, buddy. Oral sex, Melissa? <laughs> um, no, I'm kind of afraid of it. All right, well, that's the missing kinda ingredient. Kind of me out. Well, yeah, me too, but I do it. <laughs> God knows. 
Well, what, seriously, why, why is that creep you out? I mean, you've been with this guy for five years, six years. I know. I, I tried it when I was 14, and then all of a sudden he said, ooh, bad smell, and it kind of put me off. <laughs> Okay. What I love about women, and let me tell you something about women. Women are so stupid, Drew. All you got to do is it's almost like they're like dogs. You get to screw with them one time, and that's it. It's like one guy gets in at 14, he's like, What's, ooh, that's funky. And that's it for the rest of your life? No oral sex? The, 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 the thing that women crave most? Imagine, and, imagine, just twitch it around and make it a male now. Girl goes down there and says, oh, my God, what would the guy do? Now I have to get as much, now... I have to quit my job and go on some sort of oral tour where I'm obsessed with receiving oral. That's yeah, that's what guys do. They would get more oral. But they would certainly just say, oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, get down. Get busy. Listen, what do you think? You got Rose Garden down there? Start sucking. That's what a guy does. Please. Oh, I, I, love, I love the fact that it's so easy to just, it's like, well, I almost, uh, almost drowned in a pool when I was nine. I can't, can't look at water anymore. Again, it speaks volumes about the motivational priorities of the brain, how different they are in the men than the women. Yes. I also had a seizure when I was 12, and I've never eaten tuna because that's what I ate before it. Okay. Yeah, so seizure's you're, you're, a little more of a powerful yeah. uh, negative reinforcer, I'd if say. You're what we would call simple. Yeah. Well, you think you had seizure from tuna? Well, I know it's not from tuna. It just kind of put me off tuna. I yeah, never really, really liked uh, it anyway, so. so now the, the fish smell is especially so traumatizing to her. It's ironic that the <laughs> tuna... The, uh, well, it was just shows. traumatizing because I woke up 40 minutes later in a ambulance with throw up all over myself and not really seeing anything. Okay, but good times. Well, look, you're going to need some oral, sweetie. <laughs> I, okay, um, the other question I had was... Yes, please. I've masturbated, and I'm not sure I'm doing it the right way because I never really go inside. I rub the outer... That's, yes, like, outside that's the, outside's where, where the action is. Outside is fine. You're okay, doing it fine. Yeah, okay. but you're not having an orgasm, right? Well, not during sex, and it's just kind of no. But what about a... what about during masturbation? Yeah, I, it's not excruciatingly big orgasm. Like I've never really had that wow orgasm. All right, no, listen, you're breaking my heart. You having an orgasm? She, she right? may not be. She may not be. She probably isn't. Melissa's twenty. Yeah, I was like talking to a fifteen year old. That's all right. That's good. No, it's that. good. No, yeah. no, it's good. It's better. It's good. No, it's great. Melissa? Yeah? Do you think you're having an orgasm when you masturbate? Yeah, well, there's the buildup and then there's the release, but it's not really satisfying. Are you on medication? Trilethal. Uh, it's possible that's affecting this. You're on that for your seizures? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she says. Uh, yes. Melissa? Yeah? Are you on the trileptal for seizures? Yes. That's kind of an unusual. No, do you, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait, wait. Oh. Do you do you have pseudo seizures? No, I have a partial complex. Partial complex seizures. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good times. Trileptal doesn't usually cause problems. That's a pseudo it seizure. We, it, it's that's like a fake orgasm, right? Kind of, kind of. It's more complicated than that. It's it's probably the way people that have been traumatized have panic attacks. Frankly, that's my theory about it. Okay, it looks like a seizure, but there's no seizure activity in there. Well, brain. let me say this very quickly before we go to break. All you simpletons out there who just like, hey, I tried this once, I don't like it, or I associate this with that, or whatever. I made me vomit one time. First off, if I did that with booze, where would I be now? Wouldn't be as drunk as you are tonight. That's right. I got right back on that booze horse. Let me tell you something. I vomited all over myself when I was 15. I fell asleep in my own driveway. Yeah. Woke up my feet hanging out of a shrub. It's still pulling gravel out of your face. I had gravel in my face when I finally climbed into bed the next morning. But did I quit boozing? Of course not. Hell no! I didn't quit boozing. You people with your, with your tuna. <laughs> I ate some tuna. No, I can't eat it anymore. Please, eat that tuna. Let him eat that tuna. Let's all get along. We'll be back. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Hey, everybody, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800. Sound like Norm McDonald there. 1 800 L O V E 191. Where's he been? Norm? Yeah. Norm goes away 
uh, for about 18 months <laughs> and then resurfaces that. in a sitcom that doesn't suit him very well. And then uh, that lasts a few months and then he goes away for another year and a half and then comes back and does another sitcom. Interesting. I don't know why, like, um, like I know Norm. I'm not best friends with him. I just hung out with him a little bit we here and there. We played baseball with him, remember? Oh, yeah. Norm's an um, alcoholic, gambling addicted, <laughs> uh, horrible, horrible man. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I did not experience him that way. He seemed okay one-on-one. He, he's, on one. he's, he's talented. He's funny. He's a, a decent enough guy. And by the way, gambling and alcoholism does not make somebody horrible, horrible. No, but I, I just mean, he, he, he ain't, I, he's not sitcom material. I'm not sitcom he's, he's material. He's not John Ritter. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. not. He's got more to say than that. Yeah. And right. uh, he should say it. And I don't want to do a sitcom for the same reason Norm shouldn't want to do a sitcom, but he pops up in a sitcom once yeah, a year. And then yeah. it doesn't last that long because yeah. it's not... It's not for him, even though he's real yeah. talented. He's, TV. he's a good guy, but... There's only so many options on television these days. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, look, at Jim Belushi. Sitcom. That's, that's sitcom. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. When Dave? I went saw, when, hey, when I went and saw Norm MacDonald uh, do stand-up, mm -hmm. there were disclaimers saying, you know, a lot of people don't find his humor funny, and you might leave, and we're not giving your money back, and about 20 people left. Wow. <laughs> Did he say insulting things? No, just like his his humor is really offbeat, and people think it's gonna be like Saturday Night Live humor, and it's not. Yeah, but also sometimes he's like drunk and hungover, and you know what I mean. Yeah, like you're not getting you're not getting him, you know, you're not getting his A game. Yeah. But did you like it, Anderson? Oh, I loved it. The wait staff was laughing, I was laughing, but a lot of people were not laughing. But uh, you you can agree with me when I say not really the best guy for a sitcom. I, I I have no idea how that happened. It's like George Carlin doing a sitcom, but that failed. But right. Norm's well, that's working. the point. That's the point. Yeah, you should stay with Thomas the Tank Engine. That's right. Where 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 he's known and loved. Yeah. That's how he got to start. All right. Random. Random. It's all luck. You went from Thomas to stand up. Just you see how that works. All luck. Or back and forth. All luck. Don't bother trying anyone. True man. He rated a Thomas the Tank Engine once. <laughs> Dave, you're twenty. Hey. What's up? Um, I have a question about um. Uh, when me and my girlfriend, we when we were like having sex, mm -hmm. there's like a a big difference between when I finish and when she does. And I you mean, <laughs> what does that mean exactly? What's you mean in time? Yeah. Or in, in what what transpires like in, in, in time? In time. I see in time. So um, you finish when? She finishes first, and then how long into it does she finish? Like between five and ten minutes. All right, mm -hmm. and you. And me, it's like a twenty thirty. Twenty thirty. Uh huh. So she's got to kind of hang in there. For, yeah. Does uh, she get know. frustrated and sort of unhappy with your continued beating? No, on I, I, I don't know. It just feels weird because. Because she's mean, done. Yeah, she's done. She's really done. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Huh. And uh, do you, okay, do you think you could speed up a little bit? Yeah, I was wondering, like, what would be? How often do you guys have sex? Uh, at least once a week. Once a week, yeah. Mm. Can't really do much with that. Um, how's your plumbing going? I mean, are you are you cleaning uh, it, clearing uh, the pipes? Yeah, you taking care of yourself. Yeah. How often? How often? Uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing it now? No. But you just finished, right? Crime. No, no, Fire not by crime. myself. It's always with her. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, uh, do you beat off? Uh, I used to. But you don't anymore because you got her. Yeah. But yeah. you only have her once a week. Maybe more. It it all depends on how often we get to see each other. I see. Still but not an answer. Still, you never beat off. No, not not much anymore. Like no. every now and then, if I haven't seen her for like a, a long time, maybe. What's a long time? Like a couple of weeks. And if you didn't beat off and you let the tough couple weeks build up, would you come quicker? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I know, Drew, you always play this card, but look. Some he, guys, it works, sometimes it doesn't. He says, yeah. I think it works the opposite way, which no, it can't. is, I, I, I think he needs to get into a rhythm yeah. and a paced-up rhythm. It's yeah. like, here's what it's like. You know, I get it. It's like saying, look, if you only run once a month, yeah. you can run really far because you've saved up all that running. Uh-uh. You don't run so good. You but, run better if you run every day. But if you'd like to take a giant whiz, you got to save it up. And it's easier to... Oh, that's you know disgusting. What I'm saying? You peeing on her? You know what I'm saying? It, it's, there's a save-up component to, to uh, orgasm in the mail. There is, but not at 20. There can be. 
There can be. Mm. And it's not necessarily. But I agree not with you. Really. He should try I, he'd it. be better off just getting it going on a daily basis and working on his speed. I, I agree with you on that. I actually think he's probably masturbating more than he's telling us, but he's sort of ashamed to admit it. Dave? Yeah. Are you lying to us about the amount you beat off? No. Okay. Well, listen. Why do I? Do me a favor. Do it every day. Okay. And then uh, try an experiment. When are you going to see her next? Uh, probably Saturday. Saturday. That's, uh, what, about three, four days, three days? Uh, I want you to do it uh, tonight, tomorrow, Friday. And, and focus. And then focus on Saturday. But then each night he's got to focus, too. You get that. Yeah, time. see if you can speed it up. And if you can, if it takes things longer because of this, then you wait a couple weeks and see if you can get a build-up thing. Right. Because some guys are trigger more easily if they've been deprived for a while. Right. All right. Uh-oh. Uh oh, wait a minute. Tom? Yes, sir. You're 22? Yep. You can play the Taboo 2 theme song on your guitar? Yeah, I figured it out for you. Wow. Oh, it is a guitar-driven song. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's acoustic. Classic. Yeah. It's <laughs> it is. It's a, yeah. It is now. <laughs> Taboo 2, my favorite <laughs> porn movie. Uh, the guy, for those of you who haven't talked about it in a while, uh, the guy, Junior, is having sex with his mom and his sister. Oh. Uh-huh. And uh, and his girlfriend, mm -hmm. and uh, someone went and wrote a song about uh, Junior. Well, it's in the song. Well, it's, it's in the it's, movie it's, Taboo it, it too. Is, the song is all these women's perspective on this guy. He right? has it all, right? Yeah, right. I mean, you know, a guy ballad. guy is raping his sister the ballad, and his mom. The, the ballad of Taboo too, right? right. The, ballad the ballad of Junior. Of junior yeah. yeah. Okay. So do you do you, okay, you have acoustic guitar there? Yep. Oh, it sounded like Tavu. It had a Pavlovian reaction. I had a little boner there. <laughs> All right, so Anderson, why don't you play the Tavu? No, 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 shut up. Shush. Right. Play it softly. Now, let me just uh, kick it in here, Tom. See what Sal's okay. doing here. You can put the phone down. Or... I can't hear it. Play it again. What do you say? Play it. I can't hear it. All right, then start. Just play it. No, no. Okay. You, all right, Anderson, you hold off on it. Tom, just put the phone down by the guitar gotcha. and start playing. You yeah, start we'll playing too, okay? Okay. You okay. will. Don't worry. All right, hang on. Just don't start beating off at him, all right? I'm too late. He has it all. Yes, yes he does. <laughs> he knows how to please in every detail. And do it with style. He does, he does it, with it with me. Oh, yes, oh, yes he does. He does. <laughs> I, know I know that you thought, thought that, that you knew him. Maybe you did. <laughs> but you don't. El Cabong played a better guitar. <laughs> he reels what he wants you to see. And then it does, shows it all. And when he does, he satisfies me. Just what he could do. You'd want him to if you only knew. Beautiful. Wow. You may have hit one bad chord there, but other than that, that was solid. Yeah, I had to get up right in the middle because the, the box that was on was moving, so I had to adjust it. Oh, okay. All right. That's all right. Wow. Tom, is Tom a virgin? Tom, are you a virgin? You know, last time I called, you asked me the same thing. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're not. I have a cold right now. Yeah, well, no, nobody who uh, strums a guitar like that is going to stay a virgin for long. No. I'll tell you that. That's how I lost right it. Right now. All right, now, how did you learn the theme to Taboo 2? Well, I've been listening to you guys forever, and I just I downloaded the MP3 of you singing it, <laughs> and um, I just figured it out a couple minutes ago because I was bored. I've been wanting to do it forever, but... Well, I live in yeah. Maryland, so it's hard to catch you guys. The next one you got to learn Why is... Why is it hard to catch us in Maryland? Because it's so late? Cause, yeah, it's late. Well, wait a minute. What time are we on in Maryland? I thought, oh, he can't get to us because yeah. we're on later than we air. Right, exactly. I see. He can't yeah. get to us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one you got to learn is got to get it on, which is in <laughs> the same thing. It's got to get it on, got to get it on. It's a, it's a little more up-tempo. Is, 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 is it in Taboo 2? Yeah, it is in Taboo 2. Hmm. So he, he doesn't have the. He doesn't have Taboo Well, I know, I'm saying, well, hold on a second. Tom. Go out and get that taboo too. You could do worse. 
Okay. Your All mom right. will be very impressed when she finds it. In the get that, and then call back when you've learned the guitar riff to gotta get it on, gotta get it on. A little bit of a cop-out when you're writing a porn song. What's this one going to call? be called? Uh, this one's going to be called Gotta Get It On. Uh, how's it go? Well, yeah, let me, let me get it. Gotta get it on, gotta get it on. Gotta get it on, gotta get it on. Gotta get it. Uh, yeah, so this one's got to get it on. Uh, I get nice. it, Bob. Good job. Uh, nice work. Uh, how many weeks you got in on? Gotta get it on. Uh, just, just about two and a half. All right. Let's uh, hop back to the phones and speak to Dylan. Oops. Dylan. Oh, yes. who's that? Yeah, Dylan. What's up? Um, my mom and dad have been like bickering back and forth for like the past couple of weeks. And my dad has has told me that my mom really wants to get a divorce, and I don't really want them to. But then they'd be fighting every day, and I've got a little brother that's six and a little sister that's ten. And I was wondering if it'd be better if they just stayed together and fought, or like actually. It's better if they get some help and work things out, even if they're sort of quasi unhappy. It's better than breaking everything apart. Well, can you? There's been some studies recently that show that people that come from divorced families, it has an effect to well into your 30s. What are you talking about, Drew? Look at me. <clears throat> A case in point. Gotta get it on, gotta get it on. Gotta get it on, gotta get it on. And then a great sound. <laughs> Feels so good. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to bring that in, Drew. I that can't is wait. solid. I can't wait. I'll tell Strangely, you, I like it better than uh, tell you the, guys from the other one. The guys from System of a Down know got to get it on. Of course. Well, John is like John. You, knows. you can write yeah. the script out from the, of the taboo too, just from, <laughs> from memory. Hey, Dylan. Uh huh. Your parents planning on uh, getting any counseling? I don't think so. Well, here's the thing, Dylan. You can't be responsible for them. Whatever they you do is what but, they do. But I certainly would go to them and say, "Hey, you know, this is affecting us. Why don't you guys?" You know, do something that might help this, might heal it. Whether you go to your clergy or go to a therapist, whatever it is, get some assistance with this because the breaking apart, each of them are going to find somebody else that's a pain in the neck too. And yeah. it's not going to be a good thing. It's going to be bad for the younger siblings. Come on. They're not, they're not beating each other. I mean, it's not, it's not it an irretrievable on, situation. Chris? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, you're 21. What's up? Oh, dude, I love you guys. I've, I've listened forever and I've never gotten through to you before. Here we are. Uh, yeah, seriously. I mean, basically, I just have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Hey, um, I just, I want to know the scientific or medical, you know, explanation or justification for farting, basically. Justification? Well, why did why did God, we're asking God, why did you create such a How thing? Do you, yeah. To thank him for it, as Adam would? I don't, I don't want to thank him. I mean, it's a pretty hideous thing. I just, I mean, oh, I really oh, want to... Careful, careful. Adam's getting very offended, Chris. Be careful. Well, you know, I mean, because I'm, I'm, I'm a My My hobbies, my <laughs> livelihood. <laughs> What's that? Your love. My I'm, love. Yes. I mean, I mean, I just, my farts are bad. I just, I kind of want to know medically what they are. I mean, I... I uh, well, how's it work, Drew? Well, there's two ways you get the gas. One is swallowing air. And some people, that's more of an issue than others. <laughs> but that is sort of where some of the volume comes from. The smell comes from bacteria in your bowel, which some people have more of. That yeah, split I don't certain, have enough. Yeah, split certain things you eat into methane gas, basically. And that can have fair volume, but that also is the big thing. I, I tell you, I have not had a good, bad gas day in a year. Just not had a good day. And yeah. Drew, you know when I've had some good outings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've not had one in this studio, interestingly. I, I haven't had one in the old studio for six months before we left. Oh, my God. Maybe yeah, a year. you had one. No, nah, I mean, Drew, it's been a couple of years. Uh, I mean, I've had some pretty big days over there. I'm just talking about. I, I'm, you got gas? <laughs> Drew's got a fart. Drew, don't fart because Drew's farts smell. My farts don't smell. Yours can be awful. <laughs> I mean, it's just awful. I, I know, but here's the thing. <laughs> You're so proud of that, too. It's like, <laughs> Drew, no, please, don't, 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 don't. You flatter me. But let me explain. Yeah, Baseball explain. analogy. <laughs> I am like, a if I was a baseball player, I, I would strike out or ground out just about every time. Except. And have, yes, have trouble getting the ball out of the infield 
Almost all the time. Almost every time I get up. The, then, then and then I would jack one no, for no, no, 550 you get, feet. You get up to the plate and point to the outfield. <laughs> yeah. Point to the deep center. Right. And, and, Drew, and man, deliver. Just Drew's pow. been in a couple of those games. Oh, he I'm, comes in and just says, just points to the outfield. Just points. And, and just, just out of the park. All right. But I've not had one of those days in a long time. And here's my question, Drew. Yes. Adam. Everybody's always... Okay. Everybody always says... And I've had this argument with Jimmy many, many times. <laughs> Because he's passionate when it comes to this. He's always like, oh, it's what you eat. If I eat clams, I'll do it. it. If I eat this, oh, that. Right. Okay. But how come I eat whatever all the time, and then one time I'll get gas, and I'm always eating the same thing every day? Because probably some spice or a legume or something gets in there. Probably. Yeah, come on. You go out to eat all the time. It might have been the day before. My my diet is like a handful of things. It's just a handful of things. I eat the same thing all the time. people just stimulate it when you eat a lot. But that night I had a horrible gas. I didn't eat a lot. I didn't do anything any differently. I didn't do it. And then there's guys who have it all the time, and it's bad. No matter what. No matter what. Yeah, those (laughs) things... Well, the heavier guys, yeah. Cousin Sal. Guy's blessed. But some guys are just bad. They're just... Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's what time. I'm saying. Everything that comes out of them is bad. Yep. B.O. 95% of what comes out of me makes a, makes a good novelty noise, but no, it's not bad. Not bad, yeah. yeah I didn't blow gas all night, very nothing. Yeah, yeah. It is. It breaks my heart. Yeah. I blame my parents. But... Again. I, I'm just saying, it is your diet, but it's also what's in your gut, Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The bacteria that happened to be there that day. Right. But it's what the bacteria are getting. That, that, uh... I'm telling you, Drew, I eat everything and anything in all random orders and all quantities and all different times and nothing. Yeah, yeah. And then once in a while, pow. Oh, yeah. And it's and I would know. I'd say, oh, because I would do you, that every time. You point out of the park and, man, <laughs> you hit it. No, what I'm saying is, is if that night I well, was blowing horrendous it, gas see. and I said, I went out and I ate Vietnamese tonight and I never eat Vietnamese and this is what's doing it. You eat no, it every night. but that night I had some yeah. asparagus and a piece of chicken, the same thing I have every night. Uh, I know. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm, uh, All right. Who are we talking to, Max? Sure. Oh, Max been on hold for a while. Max? Hello? You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Uh, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Um, Ooh, Jennifer's not even longer. Mm-hmm. What's up, Max? Um, it's about a, an eye twitch. I've uh, I've had it since I was a kid, uh. but it, it'd kind of be there for a few months and go away. Uh huh. And then about two years ago, it came back uh, really, really bad. I mean, like so it's something. It's doing something doing that some, somebody can see if they're looking at you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like I, I wouldn't okay. even know I was doing it. It was like uh. really kind of violent. I guess you could say. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, really intense, and it, it, right. it settled down a little bit since then. Uh-huh. But it, it's still is it both still eyes? Or is it is it both eyes? Or yeah, just one both eye? eyes. I mean, really, from like both eyes up to the forehead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they call that blepharospasm? You ever heard that word? Uh, I had it checked out by like a just like my normal doctor. Uh, well, he actually just noticed that. Maybe he's gay. Isn't that yeah, how they communicate? I, this, I've seen a patient with this, and, and I would see a neurologist about it because there may mm. be some anti-epileptic type medication that can help with this and or other medications, too. That, that if it were one eye, sometimes they even do a surgery for this. Oh, really? Yeah. To make the other one twitch? Yes, of course. So they can have some uh, symmetry? Sure. But this is a uh, blepharospasm is usually what this is called, and you, you should see somebody about it. It can be treated, all right? <laughs> gotta get it on, gotta get it on. Gotta get it on, gotta get it on. Then the sax comes in. And it shifts gears. Feels so good. Oh, there's other words. Nobody Whoa. wants to hear it. <laughs> uh, Chris, you can say anything. You got it? Right here. Right. Gotta get it. Jennifer. Yes. You're 23? Also, yes, I am. And Chris, be yourself. See, this is being yourself. <laughs> All right, I have a comment for you, Adam, and then a serious question for Dr. Drew. My comment to you, Adam, is that you are the man. I have got so much respect for you because you speak your mind and are not afraid to say whatever it is you're thinking. And I could eat so much SH for that back here, and so I have mad respect for you on that. <laughs> Did you hear his, uh, his uh, explanation about violent crimes and rape? It, I, you know, I have to agree with him. You know, I think it's stupid how how they have it uh, figured out like that. You know. Yeah. Well, it's I just uh, like I said. It's uh, like the when you say uh, rape victim and they say uh, rape survivor. Mm-hmm. Any any anybody who uses a survivor thing, where it's uh, abuse or a rape or whatever it is, incest, eating disorder. I just I, I automatically hate that person. I don't want to yeah. lessen what happened to the person. It's just. Better to be, you're not a, yes. Well, first off, every victim who wasn't killed 
by their assailant is a survivor. Yeah. Anyone who's been through anything and is alive is a survivor. Right. Yeah, you better better to call yourself a victim. It means someone did something to you. Yeah, survivor. By the way, just because you feel bad for you then. Well, just because somebody was a victim doesn't mean they're forever a victim, which is what the implication is, which sort of really reinforces what the person is feeling and protecting them from dealing with that. Right. Yes, look, again, you can be sitting at a, at a stoplight and some drunk driver can broadside you. He T-bones you. You're a victim. Doesn't make you any worse a driver, any weaker person. It just means, you, victim just basically means somebody did something to you that you had nothing to do with. And if you still continue to feel like a victim, you better deal with that. Thank you, Drew. All right. All right. What's My up, Jennifer? Drew, is this. It's about kind of vulgar sit uh subject, but um, I've always had a very irregular menstrual cycle. Um, oh, and what I can't stand it. Mm -hmm. Huh? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, what I noticed was, um, it, didn't, it hasn't really bothered me. I've been to a gynecologist three times. You're lesbian. Specifically regarding, and I'm not a lesbian, um, specifically regarding um, the situation because um, I'm getting to the point where, you know, if I get into a serious relationship, I want to have children. You're um, lesbian. And they have said Laura, there's please. nothing physically like wrong with my reproductive system. I just don't bleed normally. But what my question is is that I've noticed that um, when I have sexual intercourse, when I have sex, every You're lesbian. time, and it's been irregular, mind. It's not like I'm having regular sex, but it's like I like say I I usually have a period maybe three times a year if nothing happens. But if I have sex within a week to a week and a half, I will have one regular menstrual cycle and then it'll go with nothing again until I have sex and it'll come. So basically every time I have sex, I'll get my period, but if I don't... It is very come. common for sex to stimulate bleeding. And because you don't bleed regularly, your endometrium is sort of built up and unstable, so every time you'll yeah, stimulate it's bleeding. It's like a snow drift. you got to shoot it with that's a howitzer fine. cannon and knock that, it down so it's not fine. an avalanche. And Definitely so you campers don't get caught well, under it. It, it. it has no specific implications about your fertility. Wow, that was However, crazy. you do when the time comes to have a child, you are going to want to document that you are ovulating and be sure that you don't have polycystic ovaries. But beyond that, there's nothing special about this. You a big gal? Oh, really? You a big gal? I, well, you know, I haven't always been. I'm, I'm a little larger now. You're yeah, fat. The True, time please. I'm fat. Um, mm -hmm. But I haven't always been, and I've always had this problem, even when I okay. was a regular height and weight. Did they do an ultrasound of your ovaries? Um, they did both an external and an internal ultrasound. And did and you have cysts? Huh? Did you have cysts? Uh, no, they, they haven't noticed anything like irregular. Like I uh. said, I'm completely healthy, except for the fact that I don't bleed. Okay. What size are you coming in at? <laughs> Are you talking about breasts or waist? Uh, give me a whole package. Height? 5'8", uh, and five I weigh eight. 255, and I wear a 42 Two. double day. Ooh. You're fat. Yeah. Yes, True, I please. Am. True, please. Hold on, let me do a little... Oh, okay. 255. 255. All right. And uh, are you, are you going to get on a, do a little exercise, get on a diet? Hey, you know, it's tough. I work overnight. Right now, I'm at work right now talking to you guys. I do All right. Well, oh, I see you have a job. Yes, well, then you have to be morbidly time. obese. <laughs> Anyone who holds oh, down a job must... You know, I know, it's tough. You work. No, it's yeah. I'm lazy, too. You know, it happens. Shit happens. All right, listen. What the hell? Jennifer, Let me tell you something. She's weight, fat. She's lazy. She's happy. I say, God bless her. She finds herself a nice, skinny black guy, and uh, they'll be happy forever. You look, the, the weight does affect ovulation and endometrial stability. For sure, it can make you not ovulate being overweight <laughs> like that. So you might want to look into that. Five and, eight uh, two five yeah, five. If you've is, not been uh, under that's a, stout, by the yeah, way. Yeah, if you've not been over a hundred under one hundred and seventy, hundred eighty, all that can definitely affect your uh, your period. You know, it always kills me is when uh, they they set that they're two fifty five. They set that target weight for one ninety. Yeah. You know, and it's like, hey, they're walk now, now. Now we got to see them in the ski pants. And it's like, uh, with the, with the now look, this is a relative thing. You, you've you lost 65 pounds. So God bless you. But to me, your 190-pound chick is 5'8". Got to get them ski pants off and uh, put the gauchos on. Yes, Drew? Gaucho, yes? Okay. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right America's most trusted condom for over 80 years. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Amanda? Yeah? You're 18? Yes. What's up? 
Uh, basically, I cannot get a guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. really stupid, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I don't know, I called a dateline, but you need like a credit card. And there's always a little sex thing attached to it, too, for whatever. Wait, 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 wait. You're, eight, you're 18 years old. Yeah. Right? You live by the beach. Uh, yeah. And you, did you go to high school there? Well, I went to high school there for a year, and then I went to Wyoming, and I came back. I called a while back because of the, the throw up on the dick thing. The what? <laughs> threw up? I, I called like, I don't know, like a year ago. I was the one that threw up when giving head or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or something in Wyoming? Well, yeah, that, yeah. I was the blind chick that called like... Blind. Uh, yeah. All right. And now you're in, in California and you're having trouble getting dates. Yeah, I've, I've had trouble getting guys my whole life, but I don't know. And I, everybody always told me to go out and do things. I have no way of doing things. I can't get a ride anywhere. And, like, I don't know. Wait, they call you to do things, but they're not willing to pick no, you up? No, they tell me. People tell me that I need to get out and do things, and I uh, can't. So are you totally blind? Yes. So what do you see? I see Just... lights and crap. I see, like, shadows and things that they get close enough to me in light. Oh, you do? Yes. Do you sleep with your eyes closed? Uh, actually, my eyes go kind of all around my head, and I can't control them unless I actually close them really, really tight. So, yeah, I sleep with my eyes moving around. Moving around. Or, that's what I was told anyway. I have, like, okay. Tourette's. You get, you get one of those eye shades, because it freaks people out when they see that. Well, I don't know. I don't know really. I don't think it's quite that, too. I don't know. Okay. I think I'm just cursed. No, I just meant for when you're sleeping. I don't mean for during the oh, day. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're cursed. What do you mean you're cursed? I just, I am, I guess. I can't have relationships, and I don't know why. Well, look, here's the thing. You're 18. Yeah. It's feast or famine when you're 18. There's about 20% of people that just have more relationships than they know what to do with and a line forming at the rear. Yeah. And then there's others. Everybody else. Who's Absolutely. just everybody else. Just awkward yeah. and can't get off the ground. Yeah. And then you meet somebody, and then you get some confidence, and the next thing you know, you're in great shape. We, and one, then they break your just, goddamn just, heart, Drew. They tear it out. It's not even the confidence. Yeah, you, you learn what you want, what you you know, what you're looking for, what That's fits, right. what works. I know what I want. I just can't get it. What do you want now? Does a guy have to be attractive? Uh, well, I have to be attracted to his personality, but I don't care what he looks like. I know you don't care what he looks like, but like, like, look at it this way, and you're not a guy, but a guy goes out with an attractive woman 80% of the time so he can show her around to everybody well, else. Apparently my boobs are attractive, so I should have guys. Oh, uh, your boobs are attractive? Supposedly. Well, you, you, you can figure that out, right? Well, yeah, but I don't go around touching people comparing their boobs to mine. I mean... Oh. Yeah, but the guys do it, and they tell you that. <laughs> yeah, but... All right. Well, other girls tell me that, but sometimes, I don't know. I can't okay. figure it out. All right, well, let's figure uh, this out. Now, do you, do you read Braille? Yeah, and I, li- I listen to books on tape because actually go- going through a Braille book takes way long because yeah. it takes longer to read Braille. Than I listen to books on tape, too, because I can't read. But, well, I, just, uh, same, I can't read it. Same thing as Amanda. Are you able to work? I'm able to work. The system, though, will not get, like, the system, I'm actually going to have to change systems because I'm probably going to end up living in California because... I'm waiting for a letter from the Housing Authority in Wyoming, and I'm on SSI. My DVR counselor, who's supposed to pay for whatever equipment, you know, computer reading equipment, whatever, if I get a job, uh, she meets me twice. One meeting, she leaves, like, way, way, way early, excuse me, 10 minutes. She thinks I can't do anything. Like, she means basic. She wants me to go to a learning center, which is where mentally retarded people go to learn things like, you know, cooking in the microwave, doing laundry, things I already know how to do. Yeah, but why don't you take, Amanda, why don't you start taking some direction? Yeah, there are people who are professionals who've given you some advice, and well, you know she better. She keeps telling me to call her in six months, call her in six months, call her in six months, and okay. she, that's all she tells me to do. No, wait, where do you live now? Well, you live with I, somebody. I'm with my parents right now, waiting for a letter from the housing authority from Wyoming. I mean, I'm in California right now. All right. Okay. And I'm so, probably going to end up living in California because I won't get the letter from the housing authority. Oh, okay. So here's here's the thing. A, I agree with Drew. Uh, you need to take whatever opportunities present themselves. And I know some people seem like they have a bad attitude, and they do, because these people are underpaid and they're overworked they and they don't really care. So they, just wanna they don't care. Okay, they don't, give a, they don't give a ass. I, I they don't agree. care as much as you would like them to, All right, but, but, listen, but, but they know. But, but, they know but what let me explain need. something to everybody. Money motivates people. And all you people that are out there doing jobs where nobody pays, like your school teacher, you're helping the handicapped, 
you're picking up garbage, whatever it is, you don't find a bunch. A, there's not a bunch of money, and B, there's not a bunch of people appreciating what you do. There's there's no incentive. Once in a while, some angel comes in and is willing to do this kind of stuff. But these are good people. Don't get me wrong. But they're not. You, you know, the guys call the people that call you all the time are people that are trying to sell you something. The people who don't want your money, they call every six months, maybe. You know what I mean? You just yeah. unfortunately you can't expect the same performance out of them as you can out of uh, guys trying to sell you a car. That's all. Yeah, the, the motivation may not be as intense, but on the other hand. This is a professional. She knows what Amanda needs. Amanda doesn't know what Amanda needs. Take some direction. No, Amanda. It's not, it's not working, Amanda. Amanda way. needs Amanda. But uh, and what about some sort of group? Some sort of blind singles something? I don't even know. I don't think they have. <laughs> not that they I know. Gotta have. They gotta and have. And I want groups. a sided guy. So you want a sided guy? Yeah, yeah, you need a sided guy. You need yeah, nice. You know, you need you need a, a husky guy with bad skin. How did you lose your sight? <laughs> okay. How did you lose your sight? What? I was born blind. Okay. I have optic see. nerve hyperplasia, which is where your optic nerve doesn't See, it's, it's never that lab fire that I always hope for. You know, it's always <laughs> something kind of, I was just born that way. I see you never, you never did have sight. Nope. Okay, so you don't even know what good looking is. No. All right, you're fine then. But again, uh, don't you want someone who's nice looking so your friends go, ooh, he's cute. Well, I don't have any friends. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, screw I them. I somebody that I like and that likes me and... Was willing to give a crap. Okay. Well, let me say this real quick. I know it all sounds horrible for Amanda, but I would argue that there's a lot of people that are willing to be friends with blind people, with handicapped people of all kinds, and who would be willing to date them and whatever. I, there, hey, there's a whole segment of the population that actually is looking for that. Yeah. And in, in sense that a guy who's most of them are women though. Okay, but there are, okay, that's true. But a guy who's having a little trouble in the chick department, who's uh, had a long dry spell, is not going out with the uh, head, head cheerleader, could find, would, I, I'd go out with the blind chick. Oh, I'd, I'd, would, instead of big cans, but I'd, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be lying constantly. She'd be cr cr climbing into my uh, Chevette and be telling her it's a Cadillac. Ferrari. To, it's a Ferrari. I have to put in a cassette that had a Ferrari sound on it. <laughs> Melissa? Hi. You're 19? Yeah. What's up? Um, I was wondering if, um, like, prolonged drug use and um, eating disorders can lead to, like, diabetes. Yeah? Why? What's happening? Um, well, I've been, like, having to pee all the time. I'm, like, really tired. Um... Feeling, yeah, like fatigued, like maybe low blood sugar. Yeah, but are you overweight? No. Are you way, way underweight? No, I'm like average. But you're bulimic. And not anymore, but I was for six years. And when did that stop? Um, like five months ago. And what drug were you using? Um, oh, like everything. <laughs> well, good times. <laughs> yeah. Drew, what about being bulimic? When you're, you know, 13 to 19. I mean, those, those, uh, you, those adolescent years. Yeah. I mean, is, is, could that screw you up forever? Yeah. It should. It change your growth and things, know. yeah. Growth and development. But how are you doing? Are you okay? I mean, beside that? You mean, like, physically? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I feel a little, like, run down, but I'm okay. Like, I'm not, like, particularly unhealthy. It's not the typical situation you end up with diabetes. So you ought to get you ought to get checked. It's a very simple thing, very simple blood test. Take like I've been to a lot of doctors lately for all sorts of things and all the doctors are horrible. Like I can't get one doctor I can just talk to straight and say like I know that these things are wrong with me and like what does that mean? Like I've just I can't find a doctor who like is like no Drew, anything. what's wrong with your profession? What's going on? Insurance <laughs> companies? Lawyers. Well, I'm on HMO. I'm sure that has something to do with it. They don't have any time for you? They don't yeah. want to talk? You got like three seconds per patient? That's right. You get a minute now? Drew says yeah. uh, now, uh, because of the HMOs, he can't, he's not permitted to speak <laughs> to his patients. He has to nod. He gets two that. nods. He can either do a no do hand signs or to, yes. To assistance. <laughs> he's like a, a third yeah. base coach. He yeah. goes to his belt. That means high blood pressure. You do the, do, the, do the arm thing? It's grab, anemia. Grab the bill right? my cap. Well, that's the indicator. Yeah. That lets them know that a sign is coming. coming yeah. So you go, to the, you go to the cap. The that belt. means sign on. 
then to the belt. It's high blood pressure. Arm diabetes. Diabetes to the arm, but you can wipe off the diabetes by going across the chest. But do it to above the epigastrium. It's coronary disease. Oh, no. Coronary. That's all right. <laughs> ulcer. <laughs> pointing. Pointing. Um, yeah. All right. And then, uh, then uh, now, hand, what about hands on the hips? Hepatitis. Hepatitis. C. Ulcer of colitis. Let's be. Let's be. Ulcer of colitis yeah. is hands on the hips. Yeah. All right, so if I go to the bill, that's the indicator, right? Yeah. Then hands to the hips. Ulcer colitis, you see. All right, again, go to the bill. Yeah. It's the indicator. Swipe on the arm. Diabetes. Diabetes. Again to the bill. Go to the belt buckle now. Hypertension. Let's say swipe to the other arm. Um, ulcer. Ah, I didn't give the indicator. Oh, oh. oh ah, okay. I'm just saying, I'm, if, you, I'm if, you don't, if you don't see the indicator, if you don't see the indicator, then we wipe the sign no, off. No move. No move. Okay. All right, hey, Melissa. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm uh, glad we could help. But wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh. But, but Melissa, so you don't have diabetes, right? Well, I haven't been checked, but I was. Just yeah, all, you've say. been to multiple doctors and you haven't been tested. No, I've. Um, it's the simplest test in the world. No, I've gone for different things. Um, I just haven't thought to ask of that yet. But I just I'm think sh- like most they, of the doctors they... that I've talked to like can't give me a straight answer about anything. Why? Why do you think you have diabetes, and why? Um, it just came up because I've had all these like weird symptoms, but well, it, it was hasn't... the fatigue and the frequent urination is part of that. Yeah, but, and well, wait um, a minute, I got it too. Well, yeah, but you had prostate problems. But, but oh, yeah. Melissa, uh-huh. have you had blood tested? In any of these? Yeah, I have. Tests? Okay, I guarantee you, they check. Did they take a red top tube. Um, I think it was blue. Blue or purple? <laughs> but I can't be positive. Well, it was I mean, red. They took they took blood sugar. I guarantee. Oh, okay. It. So red red top tube. That's uh, that's a scratch. Scratch the nose. Scratch your nose. Bill, scratch the nose. Go to the bill, then scratch your nose. Bill, ear purple. Ears purple, top tube. All right. So swipe on the arm. Both knees leukemia. Okay. (laughs) That's great. It would be nice if you could just signal in, especially if you have bad news. You got to talk to some family and tell them their daughter has leukemia. It's like, uh, what's he doing? Uh, He's gone to the bill. Now it's both hands to the knees. Ooh. Rough. And you could even have one for like apologizing or something. That'd be nice, Drew. You never have to talk to any more of your patients. All right, you take that. I'll take this. Devin? Hey, Ace. What's up, brother? You're 21. What's going on? I just wanted to let you guys know I've been listening for about eight years. I got about 600 Love Lines archived in my collection. Wow. Oh, do you? Yes, I'm, I'm truly a collector. I truly, I mean, I listen to a lot of talk radio. I'm obsessed with it. And there's there's not a better combination of personalities and entertainment than you guys. I mean... Well, thank you, Devin. I'll that take means, you guys uh, above anything, you know. Where are you calling from? I'm in New York now, and I'm dying because New York misses you, you know. You're not on here anymore. No, we're not? No. <laughs> I called you guys in the night you guys were off. It was about five months ago. I sort of remember that. Yeah, yeah. And we should be on in New York. Yeah, I'm sure we will. Yeah, you should. I got to... I gotta call my friends in Seattle and have them send me tapes. It's pretty. Oh far. no, that is wonderful just, of just you. Just call, call Westwood One and get them to sell it in New York. Yeah, it, it's crazy. And Drew, I loved your book. I mean, the story of Amber. I mean, that was just. I mean, that was as good as you know Fitzgerald. Anything like that, you know? Oh my Devin, I wow. love you. Ella Fitzgerald wrote. <laughs> amazing, Scott. Wow, Devin, you really know your material. I, I truly appreciate what you guys do. I mean, I'm truly. It, it's kind of embarrassing when I have to record your show all the time. You know, when I'm going out with friends and stuff. But I just really love in, what you guys do. What are you doing in New York? I'm a music student. I study jazz. Wow! Wow! I, I want to be Devin. Sit wow. and love line. Get to and sit and listen to Love Line and play a flugelhorn. Wow. What's your instrument? I, I study guitar. That's awesome. Jazz wow. guitar. You know, not not. I love that jazz guitar. That's yeah. real guitar. Yeah. Nothing better. That big hollowed out one. It's electric, exactly, but yeah. it's sort of acoustic. It's real smooth. It, you know, it's the guitar of uh, 60s porn. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you watch porn. Yeah, but, is that a market distinction? Are you glad to know that? There's porn from the 60s. There's a lot of that swinging uh, cool yeah. cat guitar in there. All right. Hey, uh, Devin. Jeez, thanks. What can we say? Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I actually do. I mean, I kind of made it entertaining for the screeners, but basically my question is, is that I'm... Because Brian, he always wants to cut people off for whatever reason. But Devin's got a relationship with Brian. Wow. Going here. Yeah, it's good. Well, only that, like Brian. once. I recognize his voice, but no big deal. But anyway, basically, I get when I have sex with my girlfriend, uh, I'm uncircumcised. That's and the jazz guy says it. Yeah. And the foreskin comes back and it gets very dry and it's kind of painful. Mm-hmm. During during sex or subsequently? It's sub- I mean, 
beyond the fact, you know, the next morning Later, I wake yeah. up mm, and right. I got to, you know, I got to walk around for the next day and it hurts like a bitch, you know, I don't right. know. Right. Yeah. Because okay. you're, you're, here's the deal. You're the head of your penis and not used to having any friction really. But it's not the head, it's the foreskin. It's, it's, coming it's the four, yeah, exactly. It's the, it's the right. foreskin coming back. It's well beyond where it yeah. should be and I can't get it back. It's getting up, pulled. You know. Is it, right. is it narrowing where it's tough to get it back or tough to get it back over the head of the penis? It seems like it folds over. Folds you know over. what I mean? Like I got to yeah, like, yeah. you know, kind of stretch it outwards, you know. And Tell you one good way to stretch it. My dad used to do this. Uh, he played the horn. He would use a trumpet mute. You know what the uh, mute is, Drew? Yeah, that, wah, 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 wah. yeah but that, that's, that's the plunger bottom. The mute actually sticks into the thing and gives it that real high pitch. Oh, right. 40s uh, yes, yes. gumshoe kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you use the end of that. So it's, it's just about right, that cone shaped thing. Uh, on the penis. You stretch the <laughs> foreskin over the mute. I see. Yeah, do you have uh, do you have access to any mutes? Uh, not that I could put on my foreskin. You know, I oh, wasn't, there, wasn't there a trombone mute too? Uh, the trump. Yeah, I think there so was. So whenever they give that high, that real high yeah. pitch sound to the trumpet or the trombone, it means they had a mute in there. So, All right. We're going to take ourselves a little break. God bless you, Devin, for taping the show. And we'll be right back after this. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody now. Yes, I will be right back. Loveline will be right back. I get nostalgic about songs I remember from junior high, mm. and then I uh, tell uh, Brian to go get them from the music room, and then we uh, play them. And then Anderson, uh, then Anderson winces because he's yeah. cool. Yeah, he's got he he sits home and listens to the White Stripes over and over and over again. Dude, I'm because, so over the White Stripes. Get yeah. over that, please. Yeah, it's cool. It's so cool. Yeah, I just I'm into Radiohead and the White Stripes. Yeah. I hate Radiohead. I'm into early REM, early REM. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I like Radiohead. like skinny puppy. Yeah, just skinny. I like puppy. whatever other people who don't drink. <laughs> yeah, because it makes me cool when I say band. That Do you, you really don't know think about. that I'm that guy, dude? Come on. No, you're a little I'm bit, so little not that guy. Not that. Not all the way. Skinny puppy. Skinny puppy. Hmm. All right, come on, put them Beach Boys on. I was at, at a nice talk with Drew tonight about the Beach Boys, and I, I don't know why, but uh, Drew didn't have any idea about the Beach Boys and their connection to uh, Charles Manson uh -uh. and all that good stuff. Yeah. You know, you can take these CDs home with you, too. Let's do no, I wouldn't do that. Besides, they're, they're Westwood One. I expl I'd be, uh, be afraid they'd burst into flames while I was driving home. Because <laughs> everything they have here is ass. Yeah. It's a nice song, Drew. Remember this one? Huh? Yeah. Is it coming to you yet? Remember this? I had the sound when I was uh, like eight years old. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's a love song. You don't hear this one on the radio too much. It's all that... Uh, well, it's oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all that surfing USA and all that crap. Yeah. Yeah. Let's leave it going there. It's, it's nice. Sad song. Chris? Hey, how you doing? You're 19. What's up? Well, what I was wondering was... is. Uh, I was wondering if a girl can have an orgasm from strictly just anal stimulation alone. The occasional woman can, and that woman, almost without exception, is the one that can have multiple orgasms. Okay, because basically I was just like going over this with my girlfriend, and she's like, well, there's nothing in it for me, so I was right. going to argue this point. No, no, that's the end. When they say there's nothing in it for them, that means they ain't the one that can do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, guaranteed. Beach Boys are always singing about their cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. They probably just leave that one alone then. Yes. Yeah. If she if she is not interested, don't push it. Well, you got you got any extra pointers? Like, how do you get this out of your girlfriend? Because I mean, it would be nice. You know what I'm saying? If you do it, she will she'll eventually cave in and then resent you forever. Yeah. And make you pay in a million ways. Yeah. Is is there any like physical like harm you can do to yes. this one? Yes. Oh yes. Yeah, I would oh. never want to do that then. All right, there yeah. you go. All I right, couldn't do it, but uh, yeah, a lot well, of not, guys you, could. Yeah, some guys with a big penis might. But. Yeah. What's the instrument there? What is it's that? a weird, it's it's a guitar, but I think it's one of those more sort of surf guitars, you know? But you never hear it plucked that way. You're used to hearing it in the uh, riffs. See, it's sung about cars again. Chris? 
<laughs> Sarah? Oh, uh, yeah? What's up? You're uh, 15. Yeah. Um, I was wondering about vaginitis. I think I've got it, and uh, I don't know what to do. Well, how about seeing a doctor? Well, yeah, I went to Planned Parenthood a few, uh, like, two weeks ago, and yeah. they gave me a Diflucan for right, a yeast Right, so that means you have a yeast vaginitis. Well, it didn't go away. Well, are you sexually active? Not anymore. But you had been. Yeah. So this could be a sexually transmitted disease. But I got checked for all that. At, at Planned Parenthood? Yeah. Okay, hmm. well, you got to go back. And maybe it wasn't just a yeast vaginitis. Maybe you had some other bacterial overgrowth. There's another cream, Metro Gel cream, they can give you that'll take care of it. Hold on, Anderson. But uh, Kyop, wouldn't it be nice? Another well, uh, Beach Boys uh, classic. I don't know what that number that is, number uh, 14 or something like that. Well, it didn't go away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Were we done with Sarah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah I know you weren't listening, but yeah. Yeah, what did she say? What Beach Boys song do you want to hear? Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah, that's a good well, one. We must just go out with that. Yeah. Right. You remember that song, Drew? Oh, here. Do you know the song? Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. 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 It's kind of nice. Guys in love. Jennifer? Well, it didn't go away. <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> She's now a permanent fixture on this it's a show. Song about, uh, a song about uh, being older and uh, being able to pound your girlfriend without your folks screwing with you. Right? Yep. True. This was your theme song in high school. Yeah. They can uh, spend the night together. Jennifer? Hello? Yeah, hold on. We're just going to listen to more Beach Boys and go out. <laughs> Producer Ann called and told us not to play this. She did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's very funny. Yeah, she told me Wouldn't not to play it. Wouldn't it be nice? There's nothing I can do. Yep. All right. So we're going to take a little break. We're going to come back. Maybe a little blood, sweat, and tears. We got to get to that. Come Drew, on. Uh, Drew also wants to hear some yeah. Joe Cocker. Yeah. I'm not a big Joe Cocker fan. Oh, you just don't know what you're listening. You know, you know, All right. Let me put well, it you're right straight. You're straight. Well, it didn't go away. All right. We'll be back. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Love Line will be right back, so get your problems ready. Ready. Well, that's it. The best of Love Line, which after all is better than Love Line because it's the best. I want to thank uh, everyone who made the show possible. And say, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying, Mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.